Last summer, an FBI agent was pulled from Robert Mueller's special investigation into Trump. Makes sense. Peter Strzok, seen there, had exchanged anti-Trump and pro-Hillary texts with a mistress who was also on Mueller's team. That's evidence of bias and, let's face it, stupidity. Strzok also had interviewed top Clintonites Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, as well as overseeing the probe into Michael Flynn, which raises this bias test. If Flynn's lies warranted a charge, why don't Huma's and Cheryl's? It's a good question. Especially when the same lawyer also changed a vital phrase in Comey's statement about Hillary's emails. Grossly negligent, my nickname, became <laughs> extremely careless. That small change reduced Hillary's actions from criminal to merely incompetent. And that ironically preserved Hillary's nomination, helping pave the way for Donald Trump. That's pretty hilarious. If you're not a Democrat, you should be really angry. So do these revelations mean Mueller's probe is biased? Maybe. But this whole thing went from being about colluding with Russians to anything involving a Russian. If you rooted for Drago in Rocky IV, then you're guilty. You did. I did. And it's obvious that the media craves something really big. They want a holiday ham from Mueller. But so far, all they got is a fuzzy breath mint. Look at them losing their colluding minds. I think they're shocked that the noose is tightening because I don't know if they were arrogant or just incredibly unself aware and really dumb about like what the job was about, how important it was, and how under the microscope every move you made would be. I think they just thought they'd go in there and flim flam and riff through it. You know, and I think they're shocked that the noose is tightening the, and that people might go to jail. You're exactly right. For the that rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. They are so cute when they're nuts. You know what this is? It's called a fainting couch. You both need one, you chuckle buckets. But now we actually do have proof of collusion, not between Russia and Trump, but Hillary's camp and the FBI. Ignoring that would be grossly negligent. All right, we got some breaking news here, Jesse. Uh, from Judicial Watch, I believe, the new Justice Department record showed strong support Andrew Wiseman, who was a Mueller deputy, showing strong support for, uh, what's her name, Betsy Yates? Sally. Sally Yates. It's her refusal to, an, I like Sally or Betsy. Good, Same thing. Same thing. Good uh, breaking news. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There. Uh, the, her <laughs> refusal to endorse the travel ban, and he, he said, my deepest respect to you. I'm so proud of you. And, yes. and, and uh, that's a person working for Mueller. Yeah, so he praised her for defying Trump's travel ban, which is funny because the Supreme Court, by 7 to 2 margin, just upheld it as constitutional. So both of those two individuals are partisan and they're at a step with the Constitution. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. They didn't uphold it as constitutional. They said you can put it in place. Well, while I'm it's in the reviewed. middle of my brilliant commentary. <laughs> just, just let it slide and you can take it up with okay. me when I'm finished. All because right, go right ahead. It's always correct. All right. Um, so <laughs> and, and they fought hard, the team Mueller, Don't from worry, keeping this right. okay, okay. communication from the public. Now, Weissman is an extremely controversial individual. He has a reputation for rule breaking, for withholding evidence, for th threatening and intimidating witnesses. And I think the Houston bar called him a madman. Mm -hmm. Now, the two major prosecutions of Wall Street firms, Arthur Anderson and Merrill Lynch, he completely botched. Mm -hmm. One was overturned by the Supreme Court 9 nothing. The other was overturned by the Fifth uh, District Court of Appeals. So the guy has a track record of prosecutions and convictions being overturned. Mm. He's maxed out to the Obama campaign, and he's a partisan people. He doesn't belong anywhere near an investigation. Now, Mueller also, another investigator, Janine Ray, maxed out to the Clinton campaign, mm. representing the Clinton Foundation, represented Hillary personally when she was fighting the email thing. So <laughs> just imagine if the shoe was on her foot, Gutfeld. And you have prosecutors investigating Hillary, mm -hmm. and they're Trump donors, or they worked for the Trump organization, and they're sending text messages about crooked Hillary, make America great again. You think the Democrats would take that line down? Mm. No. Uh, I'd hope they have two pair, a, a pair of shoes, because I don't want her tripping. <laughs> you know, Kimberly, there's a lot, of piece of in, a lot of pieces of information here that may seem small, but they add up to a pattern of bias. You have emails with uh, these emails with a mistress, you get overlooking Huma and Cheryl, they're adjusting language to help Hillary. That's a lot of stuff.
No, it is. And, that, and what you're talking about is aggregating this information. When you put it together, it makes quite a compelling case that there was a very much a lack of objectivity, that there was inherent bias in the investigation. And what's shameful is that they would put people that are so partisan that have made actual financial contributions and have them be part of an investigation of someone that they do not support and have gone out of their way to put their money where their mouth is and say, okay, I'm against this person. Then plus the language, the text messages, the emails. And Sarah, uh, Carter told Sean Hannity last night that through her sources there are more emails coming out mm -hmm. to show the bias here and that they were really kind of out to get Flynn and President Trump mm -hmm. and then candidate Trump at the time. So this is exactly what you don't want from anybody involved in an investigation or, you know, injustice. That, that's the problem here. So you can't just blow it off and say, oh, well, who knows? No. When you add it up, it means something significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, Katie. This is collusion. <laughs> and I, how, far, how, it go, how far does it go? Probably to the yeah. top. Well, and that opens up all kinds of questions about the Clinton email investigation, which we've all had sitting around this table questioning what the extensive nature of that investigation was. Why is it that the inner circle that played around Hillary Clinton was able to have immunity? Why is it that Cheryl Mills was allowed to be both a witness in the case mm -hmm. and also the attorney for Hillary Clinton? And one thing that jumped out at me today is that the Justice Department is not commenting on any of this. So mm -hmm. it must be a very awkward place for Jeff Sessions to be in, for his staff to be in, because they're the ones who have to answer to this as well. And they have a problem on their hands when it comes to special counsel. And Rod Rosenstein, who appointed the special counsel, right. is the one who's going to have to really look at this and go, we do have a conflict of interest here. And it's not that you can't have political opinions. Washington, D.C. is a one-stop shop for, for politics. That's what people do there. Sure. The problem is the conflict of interest. And clearly, there has been one on multiple occasions in a variety of cases. Imagine, though, for what you're saying, if President Trump <coughs> wasn't elected and Sessions wasn't the AG, can you imagine that you might not ever hear about you this? But, but here's the, the fun part, Juan. Collusion. You've got, you got to <laughs> love this. If Strzok hadn't struck those words, she wouldn't have been the nominee. And you might have had a President Sanders, and you would have been laughing for the rest of the year on the five. Oh, well, yeah, I, it was a I, let me just tell you, Gregory, I laugh a lot on the five. Because <laughs> I hear he some silly laugh, stuff. He crying. I hear really silly Shock, stuff. Shock, chuckle, and say, awe. But, exactly, <laughs> that was excellent. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate that. Uh, but let me just tell you the news today, yes. which is, of course, you're not going to hear it here, folks. But the news here is <laughs> You're that Robert Mueller has now sought documents from Deutsche Bank Fake related news. to, guess who? Donald nope. Trump's is finances. That That's not true. His oh, attorney, yeah. no, Donald yeah. Trump's attorney came out yeah. today and he said, said that the okay. subpoena had not been issued. John Roberts says okay. that's and, incorrect. And let's get some Wait, more so news. We need to know if that's true. Okay. That's not true. Producer okay. should let us know. Well, let, Producers then, just said, according to Wait. John Roberts, it's not John true. John Roberts says it's not, not true. Well, okay. How dare you? How dare you? Here's a second thing to tell you, right? Fake news. Guess what? That one, You're of, the over guys, one. <laughs> one of the guys working with Manafort uh -huh. had ties to the Russian Secret Service, right? Again, we're getting closer. But closer guess to what? what? Guess what? So you don't what know. you hear here is, <laughs> oh, it's all about some silliness with a, an FBI agent. Guess what? They have opinions. They have political beliefs. Which among us wasn't tweeting, Gregory, in the midst of the presidential <laughs> debate? agent. Oh, I know somebody Thank that God. was tweeting in the midst of the presidential debate. But I wasn't debate. interviewing Cheryl it doesn't and matter. Puma. You can do your job. You can come in here and no. do your job. And then, just like uh, Mr. Strzok, do his okay, job. Okay, well, well, here's my question, then. Because the entire reason why Jeff Sessions, as the Attorney General of the United States, recused himself from the Russian investigation is because he said there was a conflict of interest because of his involvement in the campaign. Yeah. Would it be okay with you for him not to have recused himself? Because no. he might have political opinions about Donald Trump, but he can still do his job, even though he was on the campaign. No, no, no. He was personally involved, Katie. In other words, he's even had to come back oh, so and there's explain a double standard. What, that he wasn't lying, but he simply forgot. So it's different forgot. for different people. Because, no, no, no. He was actually involved. This agent... This agent had a political opinion and was doing his job as an agent. You guys now are attacking law you, enforcement no. when it comes, but not... No. You don't, you've Juan, never you attacked law enforcement. Law enforcement Ron, you, no. Juan, you were trying to shift the argument away from the obvious collusion between Hillary's campaign and the what? FBI. There is That's, no such thing. You're trying to shift just, this away from Donald Trump and the fact that after the Flynn uh, plea and guilt, admission of guilt to lying, mm -hmm. that as you heard from Micah... Oh my gosh! I Mika. think uh, Mika. Mika, I think the noose is tightening. Oh well, no, the noose is. Yeah, uh, Are we allowed to say the noose is tightening, or is that like a microaggression? I don't know. Or is it a ban phrase? Yeah. A ban on people who've died by lynching.
I have no idea. I don't know. It sounds <laughs> really... But here's the thing. Jesse, the point is, he's, the noose is tightening. They're actually lowering the bar right. for what they want. First, they wanted collusion. Now they're looking for obstruction of justice. They're probably not going to get that either. They've been investigating collusion for two years. If they had found collusion, it would have leaked by now. They haven't found collusion, so now they're trying to build an obstruction case. That's what they and do, probably though. try to impeach this guy. Now, Juan, let me just go back to something you said. Yeah. I don't have a problem if someone's donating to a Democrat or donating to Republicans right. and they're the lead prosecutor going after a gun manufacturer or a large corporation or through an Indian reservation or, or something like that. This is <laughs> politics. This is so much more serious than, you know, just some sort of corporate prosecution or Wall Street prosecution. They're going after a political campaign. The winner of that political campaign is now the president. And prosecutors are donating to her opponent and giving different treatment to different people based on their politics. No. That alone raises the question of has you the integrity of the investigation been compromised? You went and has the team been compromised? There's an old saying, I, Juan. I know you, you are who you hang out with. Oh, please. That would make Mueller oh, a right? Trump hater. Oh, and, he so what does that, what does that make me? With a I bunch of Trump haters. These yeah, are my I don't friends. think we hang out oh after the God. show. Huh? No, we hang out. Okay, so that makes me, therefore, some wild-eyed conspiracy theorist like you? No, I don't well, think so. Let's just say, I'm not sure we're friends. Okay. We're colleagues. <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh but I'm hanging out here. You're like a mean girl, Jesse. I'm you guys sorry. Are on your brings out the best but, I, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't make a difference, Jesse. <laughs> I think Jessie. it does. Wait, no, no, I just made a great example. If there had been Trump donors investigating Hillary, you would have raised hell. I'm sure there were, because guess what? Are you sure about You've got FBI Are you sure of all political I strikes. I'm not so, so sure there were. Oh, tired I'm of sure guessing what? Were. I'm tired of guessing what? Guess what? <laughs> guess what? Guess what? And you guess what? We're going to go to a tease. All right, guys, we are loaded up tonight. You are not going to want to miss one moment of this show. But first, we're only now learning why former FBI director Jim Comey contorted himself to not indict Hillary Clinton regarding her use of a private email server during her time as Secretary of State. Tonight, we can tell you that it appears that the FBI's lead investigator and deputy chief of counterintel has been revealed to be just another Clinton crony and Trump hater. Peter Strzok was found to have exchanged anti-Trump texts during the 2016 presidential debates with another colleague at the Justice Department, this according to the New York Times. And get this, he attended Hillary's pre-4th of July interview that was never transcribed, and he reportedly urged Comey to strike the phrase grossly negligent to describe Hillary Clinton's handling of classified information. He softened it to extremely careless. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information, there is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. Unbelievable. And this gets better. This same partisan official was one of the lead investigators assigned to the bureau's Trump-Russia inquiry. He was very busy. And not only that, he was also part of the interview team that questioned Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn on January 24th. Huh, what a coincidence. This guy is just everywhere. But wait, there's more. Mr. Strzok was a, is a pal of Comey's. He wasn't taken off the case by special counsel Robert Mueller until this past summer in July. So why the heck didn't Mueller inform the public, given the stakes involved and the need for public trust in this investigation? Why didn't he tell anybody? This guy was, was writing anti-Trump texts during the debates? So much for transparency. And of course, let's not forget, we have a gaggle of anti-Trump pro-Hillary prosecutors who are still working for Mueller right now. My friends, this is unacceptable, it's disgusting, and it's unfair. Tonight, I urge the DOJ's inspector general, who seems like a terrific guy, Michael Horowitz, to release a full transcript of Mr. Strzok's texts, and maybe even those of other key Clinton and Russia investigators. Now, remember, 
This is the same man who helped lead the investigation into the so-called Trump-Russia collusion, this Mr. Strzok character. I have a question. How can anyone at this point, just learning this fact and the other facts that we've cited on this show, trust the Mueller office at this point? No transparency. They're not telling us the truth about this. And we're only learning it when the inspector general somehow releases this information to the public. Since the Mike Flynn plea deal just last week, the media experts are predicting, oh, it's curtains. It's over for the Trump presidency. R.I.P. Donald Trump's political life. But I'll tell you what's obvious. Here it is. Although Flynn did lie, the collusion case died. So now they're on to the so-called obstruction of justice case against President Trump. The experts think it's all cut and dried. Just by the public record, there's one piece of evidence for obstruction of justice after another, and this seems to be exhibit one. That seems to be in the territory of obstruction of justice. I think what we're beginning to see is the putting together of a case of obstruction of justice. Oh, move over, F. Lee Bailey. <laughs> now, so how worried should Trump be at this point? Well, time will tell. We don't really know at this point. But consider that the media and legal and political experts who are predicting Trump's impeachment, they also predicted this about the president's travel ban. There's an, a discriminatory intent here, and the discriminatory intent of the Trump administration is clear. It was uh, uh, premised on religious discrimination. It's very clear that the president is acting unconstitutionally. You said we don't want to ban any ba on the basis of yeah, religion. Sure that's don't. against our Constitution, yes, but that's exactly what they're doing. Thank you for calling it what it is. I, I, I'm going to call it what it is. It's a Muslim ban. Well, today, a refreshingly sane order by the Supreme Court on President Trump's so-called travel ban of six mostly Muslim countries. Well, the court declined to halt the ban despite rulings in two different lower courts. This was a preliminary, but nevertheless, a major victory for President Trump, who always had the constitutional right to determine the classes of people who can and cannot enter the country for security reasons. Now, once again, the experts are wrong. And while the media has a case of the vapors, a total meltdown over Flynn's cooperation with Mueller, the president is racking up win after win. Tax cuts are coming. Retail is soaring this Christmas season. The market is way up. And now a key win at the Supreme Court. And it's only Monday, my friends. And that's the angle.